21 YouTube settings that F small there channels. Are 20 YouTube settings. That... So let's see how. There are 20 YouTube settings. I'm wondering about this because YouTube is always changing. This is from seven months ago. So let's see if there's actual little things that are screwing people over, or if this is all hype. If this is all BS. Let's see how many views does he have? 3.1 million. So that's not too bad. Marcus Jones. It's a small YouTube channel, meaning you get no views. For this first setting, you're gonna go into your YouTube Studio, go to Content, and hover over one of your videos. Just click on okay. Details, like so. Now, if we keep coming down, we're gonna see this setting here: Publish to Subscriptions Feed and Notify Subscribers. This is going to be for most people. But it's grayed checked. out. In my case, it's grayed out. But when you upload a brand new video and you come down to the same section, you'll have the option to toggle this on and off. And the problem I see a lot of small YouTubers doing is leaving this checked when they have a lot of content on their channel that's completely unrelated oh so what he's saying is let's say you do a variety channel i'll take mine for example because i have karen videos i have horror videos i got food videos so let's say my main stuff is the karen videos and i know my audience is like 95 percent karen's watching karen videos or whatnot so when i upload let's say a food video i can unclick that so it doesn't get pushed to the subscribers so they don't get alienated. Because if you're waiting for like, oh, when's the next Karen video? And you see a food video, then a horror video, you're like, I'm not going to watch this channel anymore. Unsubscribe. So what he's saying is you can publish individual videos to people based on what the majority of your channel is. For Interesting. Other, for example, let's say I have a Star Wars channel and I'm posting a video about Spider-Man. If I leave this checkbox ticked, YouTube is going to promote my Spider-Man video to my existing subscribers yeah. who are all Star Wars fans. But they won't click on it, they won't watch it, and that's going to send the algorithm very negative signals about that video. It's going yeah, to say, it's gonna hey, alienate this is a them. bad video. Don't promote it to more people. And then your video dies along with your hopes and dreams. So again, if you're publishing a video that you're not sure your existing I'm going to have to try that. No matter how... Because I'm going to try that next time because I didn't even know that was an option. So next time I have like a food video or horror video, something that's not a Karen video, I'm going to see if this works. Maybe it'll help the channel a bit. channel is going to want to click on and watch. Uncheck this button. Yes, the video will grow much slower in the beginning, but it's not going to get the wrong data through YouTube promoting your video to your past subscribers. That's good to know. Interested in that content. Next thing I want to show I'm you. I'm liking this also already. On this same video page, just below the playlist section, and it's called the copper section. Basically, you need to accurately designate whether or not your video now, is made. Now, majority of people that make videos on here, especially in like regular YouTube, I'll call it. They, it's not made for kids. And what you can do though, is I think he's what he's going to say is, oh, if it's made for kids, click here. If it's not made for kids, click here. But if the majority, like almost exclusively all your stuff is not made for kids and for like regular YouTube, you have an option in your channel menu to do it. So every video uploaded automatically has it checked as not for kids. For kids or not. When we say made for kids, just because kids would find the video interesting doesn't mean it's made for them. In this case, kids is defined as people under the age of 13. And I think we could safely say that kids would. Yeah, because there's. I think there's a YouTube section especially for kids under 13. Be interested in watching Marvel movies. And you can't that doesn't monetize mean, it. mean, though, that Marvel movies are specifically designed for people under the ages of 13. There just happens to be some audience overlap. On the other hand, Peppa Pig, probably appealing. Yeah, because I think you can't monetize it. And you can't have comments on the kids' videos. To many people under the age of 13. However, most older audiences are not going to be interested at all. And so it'd be safe to say that Peppa Pig is designed for kids. I hope oh. that makes sense. There's now, a lot of adults that like Peppa one, Pig. If you misdesignate this, technically you could cop a very expensive fine, although I haven't Damn. actually seen it happen. The other thing to be aware of here is that if you check yes, this video is made for kids, the video is going to have very limited options. There's going to be no comments. There you go. going to be able to make money from the video. There you and go. A whole bunch of other annoying things. A little bit technical as well, but really important to get this one right. The next setting, we're going to scroll a little bit down from where we just were still on the video page and we're going to come to allow automatic chapters and key moments chapters are when you see now i think that's automatically done but youtube doesn't do it for every video though 
the video play bar on YouTube broken up into segments with a title for each segment. Now you can create chapters manually. I think there's like certain metrics you have to, you to, do, in a to second, do. Or you can allow YouTube to automatically chapter your videos. The problem with this, YouTube's AI is still not very good. Yeah. You can add really dodgy chapters to your videos that are very confusing or that just completely spoil and give away your entire video. And so unless you're like an education channel and you think the chapters are essential to your video, but you're too lazy to create them yourself and you're willing to risk it. Yeah, that's mostly for... If you're doing multiple stories, let's say you're doing news stories or drama stories and you haven't broken up the channels or you're doing documentary, that'd be more for you. But if you're doing like a throwaway digestible video, you don't really need it. Just turn this one off. If you're going to add chapters to your video, what I recommend instead is that you add them manually. Now you can do this anywhere in your video description, but what you're going to do is start off by typing zero colon zero zero and then title your first chapter. So we're going to be really original and do like intro. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add the timestamp of the end of our intro chapter. So let's say our intro ends at 15 seconds. So we're going to go zero, 15, and then we're going to type the name of our next chapter. Let's Interesting. Say, like, Maybe I should story. start doing that. Now let's say the story. Especially with these live streams. At, like three minutes. So we're going to go three colon zero zero and then we'll type the name of our next chapter it might be something like that and you just keep doing this throughout your entire video until your whole video is time stamped out in this okay, format so when you and start your video will then show up with okay so if i'm getting this right you started off where, where the video starts that's gonna be your first chapter and then where that ends let's say the 15 seconds is where the second chapter Three minutes with, okay, I got that. I chapters. got that. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna come down again, just below the cursed automatic chapters box, and we're gonna look at the featured places box. This is basically going to give YouTube permission to dox you, which you obviously don't want. You don't want YouTube telling I've never seen that before. Exactly where you are in your videos. So we're just gonna turn that one off so that we can not get stalked by our viewers. Now, automatic concepts, I would probably turn this one off as well, because again, you're relying on YouTube's AI to know exactly Exactly what your automatic concepts are. It is an experiment at this point as well. So I've never seen either safe. of those if two. If something really that confusing, then you should probably clarify it in your actual video. Now what we're going to do, check those we're going to keep scrolling down and we're going to come down to this section, licensing and distribution. Now this is going to default to the standard YouTube license, which doesn't kill your videos, but it makes it more difficult for other people to reuse your content. My controversial opinion is anyone reusing your content is free marketing for your videos. And if their content happens to do way better than your video, then it's a great case study for you to learn from. If they reuse your video and it gets like 10 times the amount of views as you, you can look at that and be like, hey, what did they do that made them successful and how yes. can I do that but better in my next upcoming video? So it's win-win either way. Yeah, unless you're like um, XQC or Sniper Wolf, where they just take your whole video, don't edit it and barely say anything. Just like, huh, yeah, cool, huh, 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 huh. Or be like XQC. Here, chat, I'm just gonna put this video on while I go take a dump, and then at least for 10 minutes while the video is playing. What I would do is click on here and change this to Creative Commons Attribution, which is gonna give other creators permission to reuse your content in their videos. Interesting. This next one, beginners do this all the time and it really bugs me. And I'll have to try some of these. When you start off a channel, if you have no content, obviously your channel is going to have no content, but okay. when you start creating content, your channel homepage, when you go to it, is going to look something like this. Now this is bad, it means you're gonna get a lot less views than you probably could be, and so we're gonna fix that. On your channel, you can find this through YouTube Studio as well, but you can just come to here in customize channel and it's going to take us to this page basically we come down here we can see featured sections this is what's going oh, to this allow is us a to basic do that thing. Cool thing that a lot of big channels do that make yeah because you can put like popular videos playlist feature channel stuff like that that's i thought that was a common thing that everyone did makes their channel homepage look full and vibrant and have lots of videos on it meaning that you potentially have more opportunities to get more views what we can see is these big channels have multiple sections of content on their homepage, and to get something that looks like that what you're going to do is hit on add section and then what you can do is select videos popular videos short videos or you can even feature things like playlists or past live streams now another thing that can hurt your channel a lot if you're not predominantly a youtube shorts channel is youtube is really trying to push shorts right now because TikTok. And so by default, YouTube is going to have a shorts featured section at the top of your channel homepage. That means that if you have shorts and long form videos on your channel, the first row of content people are going to see when oh, they're on your channel is a list of your YouTube shorts. Long yeah, so if they're watching your long form more than your shorts, they're going to show the shorts first, which is going to alienate all those people watching the long form content. Interesting. 
Long story short, no pun intended. Wait, I gotta look this up. It's my phone. Uh, I'm actually gonna look up my channel. See if I'm actually doing that on mine. Let's see. Guys, this is really cool to learn about the ins and outs of this. Now, keep this in mind. This is from like seven months ago, so it could have changed by now. Okay, my channel. Oh, I got. Well, I got the live stream first. For you, videos, popular videos. Okay, so at least with mine. It goes the whatever I'm doing right now, like the live stream. Then it has the for you section, so things that would be altered or tailored towards you. Then I have videos, then most popular videos, and then shorts. That is interesting. Maybe I'll play around with that too. What you want people to be seeing most of the time, again, unless you're a dedicated YouTube Shorts channel, is your long form videos. It's going to get the most watch time. Oh yeah, it's going see to the opportunity. See, it has the for you. I should put the um, new uploads on there, though. I got the popular videos. I don't have the new uploads on there, though. You need to make a more in-depth connection with your audience. And so what we're going to do is either, if you have lots of different feature sections, you can move this shorts of videos thing down to the oh. bottom by clicking and dragging. So it's only going to be I didn't even know you could do that. don't find anything satisfying. I didn't know you could change those. Page and just scrolling down, hopefully catch a few of them. Or if you don't have enough content to have a lot of feature sections on your channel, I would say just click on these three dots and just remove this. I didn't know you could do that publish, either. And you're done. Now, speaking of small YouTube channels, another essential setting is found in your YouTube studio also. So if you're in your YouTube studio, you're going to want to come down to settings. Then in settings, you're going to come to channel. In channel, you're going to come to feature eligibility. Now, what you're going to want to do is click on these drop downs, basically complete. Well, these you need those to get monetized. Steps, it's going to let you make longer videos. And most importantly, it's going to allow you to add custom thumbnails to your videos and live streams, which is a killer feature feature that if you don't use you're going to be killing your videos in the bad sense so another thing you're going to want to do is go to settings then you're going to come to channel in channel you're going to want to actually select your country of residence. i did that so, so that's good like really small and he almost clicked thing. on canada the there that son of a bitch that when you get i see your us dollars this is going to have like some implications on tax and stuff so if you don't select this correctly or if you do what some sneaky people do and they try to select the us because they want to try and trick people into thinking that they should be promoted to more US audiences because that's like a high RPM niche and they're going to make more money. Now you're not going to make more money because you're going to have all these tax issues and it's just going to be that annoying. That is true. So just make sure this is set right because set incorrectly, it could be really annoying and mess up your hard-earned paychecks. And the other thing too is if you're outside the US, they passed a law like one or two years ago where you get taxed on all the American views you get. So... There's some countries that are excluded from it. Apparently Canada is not one of them. So whenever I make on American views, they take like 30% of that. YouTube also takes their 30%. And then I have to pay a Canadian tax on top of that, which is lovely. Now this one's a really ninja setting that actually isn't really a setting, but I'm going to include it. So you're going to come to your channel and then you're going to come and copy your link. And then what you're going to do is open up a text doc, you're going to paste your channel link in there. And then what you're going to type in is question mark sub underscore confirmation what is equals this? one. Now, when someone clicks this link, they're going to be redirected back to your channel. And if they're on desktop, they are going to be presented with a pop-up that's going to prompt them to subscribe to your oh. YouTube channel. So you can use this link if you have related social media. Because usually when you go to a channel, the first thing that pops up if they're monetized is, do you want to join their membership? And people mostly say no. But it'd be easier if they're, let's say a live stream or... It's a popular video, and they get that redirect. Like, oh, do you want to become a uh, like a a subscriber of this channel? It's free. Then they click it. 
I like that. I'm gonna try to implement that as well. Or you can literally just use it in like the descriptions of your videos. Oh, the there you go. Or bio of your channel, which we'll talk more about later. And just having this link in more places can actually surprisingly increase your subscriber count. I did a video on this and I broke down the math. In a perfect world scenario, you can actually be getting 67% more subscribers just you know what? using this. I'm gonna try and do like a Mythbusters thing. I'm gonna try some of these things and see if they actually work link and strategically placing it around your channel. I might leave a link to that video at the end if you want more info on how to do that. Okay, this next one. You're going to come to your YouTube studio. You're going to come down go to customization. Then we're going to come to branding. In branding, you're going to be able to upload a custom channel banner. Did that. Picture. Most of you have probably already done that. The thing that a bunch of small YouTubers haven't done yet is to upload a video watermark down I here. I think I did that. What you want to do is grab something that looks like this. It should have some sort of subscribe call to action. Oh. On it. Anyway, you're going to hit done on that. And then what you're going to do, another mistake people do is they just leave it on the default settings. We're not going to do that. I think I do an entire video. Entire video. What yeah. that's going to do is add a little watermark like this in the bottom right hand side. Of yeah, because I'm pretty sure I have it set to entire video. But I have, if you notice, if you watch one of my videos in the bottom right corner, there's going to be like that Canadian skull icon. I think it's still that. No, it's the new one. The, uh, the dash fire one that's in the bottom right corner. And I have that the entire video, but... His is making more sense to have like a subscriber click here button. About I'm going to try that as well. The entire video, if someone clicks on that watermark, they're going to be able to subscribe to our channel. Helpful when people are watching your videos in full screen mode on their devices and the channel subscribe feature is not showing up for them. I'll try and remember to put a download link below for this particular image if you want to but use it. And as always, the question is, I haven't tried this out yet. So if they have that Brandon in the bottom right corner because I just put it on just for the video. Oh. Oh, somebody's calling me. I have no idea who the hell that is. Um, yeah, so... If you have the Brandon in the bottom right hand corner, I always thought it was just an image. But the question is, if you click on it, does it actually bring you to the subscriber part? Does it say, oh, do you want to subscribe to the channel or bring it to the homepage or whatnot? I never knew anything about that. Is with any of these settings that I've been talking about, you usually have to hit like publish or save or change somewhere. So just make sure you do that because otherwise you'll be dumb and I'll laugh at you. All right, our next tip. We're going to come down to settings and we're going to come to channel. Here in keywords, what you're going to do is add some keywords that are related to your channel and your channel name. So it's going to make it a little bit easier, supposedly, for people to be able to find your YouTube channel when they're actively looking for this it. This is I a good thing here. This to have a huge impact, but pretty easy to add some keywords in there. So I guess you might as well do it. And so unless you like the idea of not getting more views and subscribers in the future, then you should probably do this. So for example, I might put my channel name, hit enter, that's going to add a tag. I can put individual words like cest channel, or I can put really long keyword phrases in here that are highly related. So what people are searching for. Now the next thing I want you to do, we're going to come back to customization and we're going to go to basic info, not branding, you didn't see that. And in your description, you're going to insert a description. Now that might seem like it doesn't matter very much, but it does nowadays because with a recent YouTube update, the first line of your description actually shows up on your channel homepage when people visit oh, it. So if you okay. do a lot of these small so do a little message there. Like, hey guys, welcome back to my channel. On this channel, cut out, it's truncated. Viewers can't see anything. You can want to use that space wisely. You could potentially be promoting your sub underscore confirmation link we talked about earlier to maybe get more subscribers. Okay. Or you want to say something so you, that makes people like. So you can do like a goal, like give me to a thousand subscribers or here's the sub like sub button or whatnot you and reassures your viewers or your ideal viewers that they're in the right place so if you have a minecraft let's play channel you could be like here you'll find the best minecraft let's plays on the internet which is really cringy and boring and you shouldn't do that you, yeah you shouldn't be especially when your stuff play is channel crap in the first place let's just establish that because unless you hate the idea of getting views it's not a good idea but you get my point use this space to your advantage to actually encourage more results the next thing we're going to do we're going to come back down to settings and we're going to come down to uploading defaults and then come down to visibility. Now, here are some cool time-saving sayings where you can import oh, the yeah. title, default. So, whenever you upload it, this will be the def default like visibility. So, like, schedule, or not schedule, private, 
public, unlisted. Description template, default. I usually put it to private. Cetera, but these don't really destroy your channel. What can destroy your channel, or at the very least, destroy your ego when you accidentally upload a video that was never meant to see the light of day, yeah, is put this it visibility setting here. Now, on default, YouTube is going to upload all your videos to public. So once you upload them and hit publish, it's or going to unlisted. immediately be sent out to all of your fans. So a really nice safety precaution. Click on this, change it to unlisted, hit save. That way, next time, all you upload a video that was meant to go live at a later date you're not going to accidentally post it well you can Definitely do it private as well experience. haven't haven't ever done that i don't know what you're talking about stop the cow so the next setting we're going to come to settings again on this prompt we're going to come down to community and then in community we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom to blocked words again some useful settings in here they're not necessarily going to tank your channel though what could tank your channel is having spammers and scammers in the comment sections of yeah the there's a lot of those on youtube could lead and to twitter a very too negative experience for your viewers algorithm might pick that up and it might think that those viewers actually had a negative experience with your video not the actual comments within your video so those viewers leave they're all angry and disappointed and annoyed and when youtube shows them that post video satisfaction survey they're going to be like no i hated my experience and then the algorithm is going to be like it's the biggest piece of dog shit and it's going to kill your reach and you don't want that so a way around that is to one add blocked words in here you can add sensitive highly offensive terms like this shut up sure, head you know, keeping everything family friendly but you yeah. can also add you know yeah you can put racist words in there so no one can say racist words what kind of words i'm talking about <laughs> what i find more helpful though is that a lot of scammers and spammers they target certain niches and so the wording is often very similar across multiple of their messages and so if you can figure out what that wording is you can just insert it in here and then when they leave a comment it's going to be automatically flagged by youtube another thing dodgy links click on this checkbox People oh i didn't even know about that viewers and you are not going to get scammed next thing that, that one for sure I'm going to try out because there's so many times like, oh, if you ever need help, check out this person on Instagram and there'll be a link to it. Like, no, no, that's getting blocked. You're going to come back to a video settings, go to details and just scroll down. Again, you can find these settings in a video that's already been posted so you can fix your older videos or you can just edit these as you're uploading a video. The UI is very similar. What you're going to do is come to shorts remixing. Basically, this is going to let other people create shorts using the content from your video. Again, I would allow this personally because it's free marketing for you. Now, the next thing right below. Yeah, because I think what happens is if someone remixes your stuff, it'll show like, oh, from the original video and it'll show it and they can click on it and they can view it. So that is, like he said, advertising for you that is category usually youtube's just going to select a very broad often wrong category for your video here what you're going to do is come in here and actually select the category that your video would most accurately fit into especially if you're a smaller channel this is going to help the algorithm get a little bit more of an idea of what your video is actually about so it can promote it to the right people in the right audience and you can do this as a channel default where it automatically uploads an under that like uh, category this is to begin with and how it can do that especially with some categories now for example if i was to go gaming here it's actually going to give you an additional drop down where you can type in the name of your game and select it and then it's actually going to show up in your description it's just going to make it easier for youtube to group videos together figure out what topics videos are about and then promote related videos to the right viewers the next thing i want to talk about is the schedule setting now most of you have probably seen this so it's nothing new the problem you probably have is that you're scheduling your videos if you're scheduling them at the wrong time. So how you're going to fix that is come to your YouTube studio, go to analytics, and then you're going to come across to audience. Now, if you're a very small channel, you might not have access to this yet, which is unfortunate. But if you do, what you'll see when you scroll down is when your viewers are on YouTube, it's going to show you this little. Yeah. So you graph. know when what to send the videos out. Is look for the brightest, pinkiest, most sexiest rectangles and which day has the highest congregation of them. So for me, it looks like it is Sunday and Monday. And if I hover over this beginning one, what I can see is that Sunday at 1 a.m., very many of my viewers are on YouTube. So when I schedule my videos or shorts, I'm gonna wanna schedule them at this time or a little bit before this time, just so I can take as much of yeah, so you get the maximum amount, yeah. of all of my viewers being online that period of time. The next thing we're gonna do, come to content and then select one of your videos, let's just say this one, and then come down to end screen basically this is going to allow you to add a clickable link to another one of your videos or yeah so for this one i know about this one so what i do is i put newest video best for video and then the channel link so you can subscribe to it because the best for viewer what you can see on the screen there 
So it's a random video based on the viewer's experience and what would fit them the uh, best. Playlist at the end of your video, specifically the last 20 seconds. Not having this can be a big no-no for your videos. Basically, the YouTube algorithm loves it not just when viewers watch your videos all the way to the end, but when viewers watch multiple your videos consecutively in a row. This is called session time. So what you're gonna to wanna to do in here, if you haven't already got an end screen, is hit plus on the element thing, select say video. It's going to add a new video element like so. You can drag it around, position it, set the time frame for it, and then- I usually do last save. 30 seconds or so. Case, this element is gonna promote my most recent upload, but you can also make these elements promote the video that the YouTube That's the best one. is going to be best for them, or you can select a specific custom video yourself by clicking on this option and then selecting said custom video. And then you just hit save. This next one's to do with YouTube Shorts. Basically, when you upload a YouTube short and you go through the upload process in like YouTube's shorts are good for my channel but it'd be nice to see something that kind of pops them out a little bit more the video elements section there's a new setting where you can add a related video this is basically going to allow you to select specific video let's say this one and then when you publish your short viewers of the short are going to be able to see a link that looks like this if they click on it they're going to be taken from your short oh. to a full length long form video and i'd say most small creators probably you know what you can do with that too is you can link up your shorts so let's say short a to short b then short c then short d so just like a, a snake as well you want to get as much data as possible on their videos so you're going to want to connect your shorts to your videos so you can get as many additional views i guess you could possible. do that too to the but long if you form all these settings and you're still not getting any views you're probably going to want to watch the video i'll leave on screen it's going to oh. give you an in-depth step-by-step breakdown of a few pretty cool strategies yeah so that is a good video marcus jones 3.1 million yeah i'm going to try some of the stuff see if it works